Hello there, Sir from 17 once again, introducing you to my Dishonored, very hard difficulty, video walkthrough. This is mission 4, this is the Royal Physician. So at the beginning of this, this endeavour, we're going to be sneaking our way onto a, a, a large sequence of bridges and buildings. And it's all in aid in, in finding a, a scientist that anybody who's played Metal Gear Solid 3 and has, I assume, a, a, a knowledge of the, the history is a is a dude from the time called Sokolov and I have absolutely no idea about this Russian guy I'm, I assume if you if you research him he has ties to some pretty pretty cool things but as far as the game's purposes he's the guy who's created pretty much the 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 remedies for the plague the tonics he's created a lot of the technology he's pretty much like the you know the Tesla of this age even though Tesla's probably about in the game somewhere because it it does have quite a lot of history and quite a lot of storyline for you to find but this first area, if you rush through like I just did, using your blink, staying on the balconies, you'll come to this room here where you need to go up onto this shelf, pick up the the whale oil, and then pop it into this receptacle, which is going to power this little minecart. So once you're in the minecart, activate the switch, and uh, this will take you across. As per usual, I stay crouched, because crouched is the best position in this game. It literally is the most powerful you can be on this game because I've actually been playing it earlier uh, with a buddy of mine and I was doing a combat you know playthrough just killing dudes and I was only on normal and I was dying because you you can't take much of a beating on this game at all and the combat is good but you always seem to take on five or six guards and the, there's always someone behind you getting a cheeky hit in and it's you know stealth is definitely the way to play this although guns blazing can be fun too so something to bear in mind but this section here, uh, be careful if you try to get onto that object to my right. It's it's an environmental hazard that you can use to kill people, and it is kind of funny to use, but it's really finicky to land on. It's it's not quite as consistent as some of the other things, and when I've landed on it in the past, I've fallen off. I've had a whole host of problems, so just be careful with that edge. And you'll notice, when I am teleporting around with Blink, I always go for the triangles. And the reason I do this, guys, is because it can be sometimes difficult to judge the distance with the circle. Uh, sometimes you'll think you bang on something, other times you won't, and you'll end up, you know, putting yourself in a bad situation just because the the icon on the screen isn't, you know, the easiest to understand at times. So if you go for the arrows, you always know you're going to land on that edge because the game is programmed in such a way that it guarantees you will mantle up whatever you're aiming at, and it's really useful. Uh, this guy in this room, uh, you can probably sneak past him if you want to be super patient, but I just take him out because I know he's not going to get found, and I know that because he's in this room, the rats aren't going to eat him so he won't die, he's nowhere near water so he won't drown, and it's all nice and convenient. Well, be careful here as well. I went to mantle up this, ended up jumping over it and died because I fell to the ground. It made zero sense, it was extremely funny, and, you know, just... I don't even have words to sum up why it happened, it was just a <laughs> one of those points where the game just decided to to put a strap on on and teach me to play, you know, Doctor. But keep moving on to the flags, move on to the these anchoring weights of the bridge for the, for the tension cables, and there's actually an achievement slash trophy for getting to the top of this bridge, and it's really simple to do, I did it earlier today. I will not be showing it in this walkthrough for, for brevity reasons to get through this game as quickly as I can to help the most people in, in rapid succession. And it's, it's kind of funny when you play this game because my first playthrough, uh, it wasn't smooth because I was getting caught all the time. Uh, the reason for that is because I started on the hardest difficulty and I was pretty much doing all the restrictions that you see in this walkthrough. So uh, I was learning the ropes at the game's most challenging. And a lot of people ask me, do I start games on, on the hardest difficulty? And I do, guys, I, I do. There is a good reason for this. I've been playing games a very long time. And if I were to start any of the more recent games of the last 10 years, I say 10 years, maybe maybe 5 years on normal, I'd probably beat the game in about an hour, regardless of what it was. Because games nowadays just are not challenging, they really aren't. They, they don't reward getting to the end of the game. They're, they're almost treated in a, in a casual manner like movies are. They, the game devs want you to get to the end. They want to help you beat and experience the game because the entire point of art in any kind of creative form is, is expression and, and it's for people to see it. So uh, it's, it's kind of bred this mentality where they don't really care 
how you get there, they just want you to get there. And instead of making it meaningful and challenging, they, they generally make it as, as easy and accessible as it physically can be. And to some gamers that probably sounds like an absolutely fantastic thing. But to people like myself, uh, I don't want to get through a game without dying. I want to die a lot. I want the game to, to force me to learn. I want it to force me to adapt the way I think so that I can overcome its challenges by using you know, my ability to, to play these games, my ability to adjust on the spot. And a lot of times you don't get that opportunity because the game is, is so heavily scripted or so you know, pushing you down a road that you never get lost, you never get stuck, you never feel challenged. You just get to that point where you know, you're popping popcorn, you're enjoying it, you're pressing buttons, and to me, if I wanted that experience, I would probably play very different games. I would play the really cinematic games with little gameplay, or I would play Dynasty Warriors, where you press one button to win, and, you know, you do the same thing for every single minute you play the game, which to me sounds, sounds like a slow death. But be careful here, you can fall down that hole, I did it by accident, and there is a dude in there, so be... So be especially careful of him. My blink right now is level one because it's not upgraded. Because I am going for the the mostly, is it mostly steel and flesh or something like that achievement where you don't upgrade or use any abilities. On paper, that sounds really intimidating, but in practice, the the level one blink is so powerful you don't need anything else. You really don't. It's like, when you, when you start a new game and you don't have Blink and you have to do the prison level without it, you really miss it because you get so used to this, this, this insanely fast stealth mobility. And I think it's one of the things this game does really well. And I, I wouldn't say it's changing the rules or changed the game like some mechanics do, but I do think stealth games are probably going to, to look at this as a progression. And a similar progression... I could compare it to would be, you know, Dead Space. Dead Space changed the game when it came out, and Resident Evil is still trying to, you know, to follow in its footsteps, and unfortunately, uh, from this gamer's perspective, it's failing. And it's a shame, but hopefully they'll get there in time, and maybe, the, you know, two games down the line, they'll do the whole FIFA and Pro Evolution thing, where for a, for a certain amount of years, one company is winning, and then the other company rises and beats them, and then, you know, there's the tug of war. Right now, it's FIFA. It used to be Pro Evo, and a lot of people don't seem to realise that it's those kind of competitions that actually make games better, that make, you know, the final outcomes much more enjoyable and much more interesting, which, when en whenever somebody says, I wish there was just one console, one unified system that everybody played on, uh, that's just... You know, that's the most ridiculous thing you could ever think of because all that's going to do is make you suffer as a consumer and as a gamer because without, you know, without people pushing the barrier, without people pushing the boundaries of what we call games and what is expected, we'd just get Call of Duty every single year or every single month and people complain about it already. Just imagine if there was no competition, there was nothing driving, you know, creativity. It would be even worse. But... Once you get into this area, I tried something different. Uh, there's a couple of prisoners over here which you can release by removing a whale oil tank and it sends the area into to kind of like a craze. And I couldn't quite remember if it was what I did the first time through. I don't think it is, but I didn't get spotted and it actually cleared out some of the lower areas. If I'm 100%, you know analytical about the situation you probably don't have to do it because it didn't help me at all the path I choose uses the buildings anyway I don't go on the street but it was something interesting to try so I did it anyway and if you do find yourself in a situation like this where you want to try something always save before you do uh, it's just it makes more sense but keep on blinking you know blinking like an epileptic at a rave doing your thing Oh, nothing better than a nice cold glass of water while you're doing something like this so this section here we're moving onto the street where uh, Sokolov's building is it's this fancy impressive looking house in front of us and my first time here I was on a different house and I managed to climb over onto the roof and 
I was a little bit shaken when I was recording right here. You can tell, I'm looking around thinking, how the hell did I get higher than I am? And I ended up giving it up as a bad job. I just decided to go full frontal for this section, and it ended up working to my favour because I got into this building in a much more interesting way than I did the first time. You'll notice I'm trying to get to the chain because I think that's what I did. I think I jumped off that roof, landed on the chain, and that's the way I got in, but instead uh, I move over onto this balcony and I hop across to that roof and because this place was designed by you know some ridiculously eccentric architect I was able to jump over into this section and now we're in Sokolov's house that right there is probably one of the schematics to give to Piello who will craft you better and more interesting equipment I don't really know what there is to offer because I haven't you know, done any of it thanks to the nature of the playthroughs that I've done on this game but I am looking forward to, to, to really delving into the, to the game now that I've done the guide and it's, it's actually one of the negatives of making walkthroughs sometimes you can't enjoy the game as much as you want to just because of the, you know, the, the schedule that you have to keep and a lot of people will probably not understand that but there's a, a measure of professionalism that comes with it like not a lot of people want to get up and go to work in the morning but they have to because that's their job and if I want to make this my job I have to adopt that exact same mentality and I've got to you know put the effort in put the time in and that's what I see this is is right now and you know hopefully it will pay off because I do believe if you're good at something you you can eventually get paid for it and I do believe that hard work definitely pays off but now that we've got Sokolov uh, one thing I always forget here is to crouch when you're carrying a body, it makes you quieter and uh, don't forget that you can blink while you're carrying people too because that's another thing that I often forget there's a, a real bad transition there because I actually went down into this room by accident I should probably drop a crossfade on that and I edited it out to, to save some time but if you come over to here you can look down and you can, there you go You'll take a little fall damage, but you're already at Samuel, you've already done the mission, and uh, if you followed this or you did something very similar, you will have both your ticks for Ghost and Shadow. We didn't kill anybody, all that good stuff, and we're one step closer to those precious achievement points. So thanks for watching guys, and you take care now.